The Hotel California is where we will be staying this weekend as we focus on the California Classico or the El Trafico as some people call it or just the big battle of the LA and that is because LAFC take on LA Galaxy. And before we speak about that match and what might happen, we're going to have a look at the league standings, starting off with Eastern, because the Western paints a better picture for this game that's about to happen. In 15th place, we have New England on one point. We then have New York City on 14 points. Orlando and Chicago are on five points. Nashville and Montreal are just outside the wildcard playoff place on seven points. Then we have the first wildcard playoff place with Charlotte on eight points. DC, Philadelphia and Atlanta are all on nine points. Toronto in 5th on 10 points. And then we have 3 teams tied on 11 points in 4th, 3rd and 2nd and that is New York Red Bulls, Columbus and randomly Inter Miami. So that means there is a new league of leaders and who is that team? That is Cincinnati of course on 12 points. Now the Western. Now in 14th place is Seattle, still looking for their first win, the same along with New England. With San Jose and Dallas on 3 points. Austin are on 6 points. Now St. Louis are in 10th, joint on 7 points with 9th place LAFC, which is absolutely shocking to see them there right now. Portland, who have had a fall from grace, are in 8th. So now I mentioned LAFC 9th position, right? In 7th place we have Colorado, 6th place we have Sport in Kansas, and we have from 5th, Houston Dynamo, Minnesota, Real Salt Lake and Vancouver up to 2nd, and then that means one team is in the lead on 12 points, same as Cincinnati. That is the other half of the team we we're going to be talking about, and that is LA Galaxy, unbeaten so far, same as Cincinnati and Philadelphia, I think they're only three teams that remain that are unbeaten, but they look in great shape heading into this Glasgow. Now we move over to questions from the socials, now that's right, that's the part where you guys get to get involved, be it be short, TikTok, Instagram, X, wherever you want to find us, we're there to get asked those questions or surrounding the MLS or just surrounding the league to be honest in what's happening out there. Now as this is a California Classical special, they will all be sitting around LA Galaxy, LAFC and this battle that's about to happen. Now our first question is, is Giroud joining the MLS? Now this has been rumoured heavily, there's a lot of like, suspects around players who's going to move towards the MLS. But Giroud is one of the fan favourites and he is one of the bookies favourites to actually make the switch. LAFC supposedly made the contract talks with him and it is looking reporting that he will leave AC Milan in the summer. And honestly, I think he would be a great fit for LAFC. Great comp companion with Hugo Lloris, they're both French, they both played in the national team. World Cup winning players and he's got the elite quality. If you look at highlight reel of Olivier Giroud, he looks like the greatest player on the earth. Above Pelé, above Ronaldo, above Messi. He is just the greatest goal scorer of fantastic goals and that's what happens in the MLS. MLS every week produces stellar skills in terms of goals that are scored in this ability and Giroud will thrive. Even though he's older and aging like fine wine though, he will thrive in the MLS if he comes. He'll be a perfect fit for LAFC because he is just kind of everything that represents Hollywood. He's a showstopper, he's a scorer of goals, world class as I said, he scores amazing goals. And he just puts on displays of performances that's unbelievable and will live up to the hype in LAFC. The danger with him going to LAFC though is Griezmann, who has been a long-time fanboy of the MLS and American football, could also go to LAFC. And if Griezmann goes to LAFC, you got Giroud, Griezmann, Boyega, Lloris. It's not looking good for the rest of the league. But yeah, to answer your question, will Giroud go to the MLS? Yes, I do believe he will this summer and I believe he'll join LAFC and push them on to a higher position than ninth they're in right now. Next question comes in and this is what can we look forward to in the California Classical this weekend? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm about to get to that. So yeah, our spotlight game of the week is none other than the California Classical because why else would you choose anything else? There is Cincinnati versus Red Bulls. That's like first versus kind of second essentially. Whoever loses that game will be deeply impacted and could cost them positions in the league. But if it's a draw, then it's kind of stalemate. But the California Classical is always exciting because it's a derby, right? Let's look what we already know about this game going into it. Obviously, everything gets thrown out the window when two teams collide in their derbies. All form goes out the window. And there's a lot of things up for stakes, like bragging rights. What we know already is LAFC are in ninth. LA Galaxy are in first. LA Galaxy are undefeated. LAFC have lost some games. LA Galaxy have scored 13 goals, where LAFC have scored nine. But they have both conceded nine goals. So it's kind of like their defense is the same concede a bunch of goals but LA Galaxy seem to outscore more and just look more deadly going forward by scoring four more goals than what LAFC have. There's also been a couple of times where LAFC have been kept to clean sheets and not been able to break through certain teams like Real Salt Lake although that was a Snowdonia game really that game should have been postponed but you know it happened and they just couldn't score then they blew a lead twice against Colorado just last weekend there Although they did get a player sent off, but that was 85th minute. That was already 2-2 at that point. LA Galaxy have had to go for some dog fights and matches. One at Nashville, which sticks out to me, which was a 2-2 draw. They might score late on. They just keep going to the final whistle. 
So it looks like LA Galaxy are going to have the edge on this one. Which is what you would think from stats, but also one key part I didn't mention, LAFC are actually home for this game. And they have a 53% win percentage, 23% draw, 24% LA Galaxy. Now I would be happy going on record saying LA Galaxy could cause a massive upset here. Although it's a derby, atmosphere is going to be great in LAFC Stadium. They're going to want to prove a point and have the bragging rights over the season because their rivals are already top of the league. They're undefeated. They want to make a statement to the top of the league that they're not there to be pushed over, they're not falling down this season, and they're there to compete. One of the key players to keep an eye out for in this match would be Dennis Boega. He's hitting new heights this season. He's not got fully going yet. As a per an article, like Bradley Wright Phillips said, he reminds him like uh, when he was younger and Bradley Wright Phillips was a great goal scorer. The last New York Red Bulls goal scorer to score were like 10 goals or something. I, I don't know. I think I think that's right. He's either 10 or 20, but 10 seems low, but 20 seems too high. But anyway, back to the point of Dennis Boyega will be a key player to watch and he could cause LA Galaxy a lot of trouble down that right wing. But then for LA Galaxy, you have Joseph Pinstall. He's really hit the ground running when he's moved across. Ricky Pug, still a regular player, still a young player, still got a lot of experience ahead of him. Looks to be driving this team forward as well, being the captain. Ex-Barcelona experience, you'll have a knowledge of playing in big games, or what it feels like to be around big game atmospheres. The real concern I have for LAFC at the minute is they don't have a natural number nine striker who can pin kind of two centre backs and hold up the defence to allow the wingers to break free, where Dennis Boyega can thrive in that situation because he draws, the natural number nine draws players away from the wings, where he can just cut him behind if the player can slip him through. He's going to be throwing ball a lot more which Olivier Giroud would kind of bring. He's a good holding the ball up, knocking it forward. He brings different aspects of the game, but the defenders just know, don't know what he's going to do. Giroud's got great experience, so if he does come in the summer, expect LAFC to move up the table. But this game doesn't have Olivier Giroud right now. LAFC need to find a way to break for themselves. And if LA Galaxy can be strong, they must be one of the strongest underdogs that I've ever seen in like a football game where they're not actually favourite to win the match, but I mean, everyone seems like they're going to win this match, right? Let us know down below what you think the scoreline will be this weekend in the California Classico and any other games you're looking forward to. We might highlight them in our spotlight games of the week next week. But for now, enjoy the California Classico and embrace excitement.